at the inauguration function, he had specifically mentioned about Dhanurveda. And uh, we at the Agastyam venue, and uh, he was also here intermittently, Mr. Govindan had come all the way from Vainad. He's the traditional archer, and those who went to Agastyam could see the variety of bows and arrows that he was carrying on display and allowing us to try as well. And yesterday, the tourism director was also really enjoying performing with the bow and arrow. So I welcome I welcome Professor Ananda and he'll be talking to us about the traditional archery techniques. He is from the Transdisciplinary University of Bangalore. We had a Hariram Murtiji visit two days ago and uh, he was also here talking to us. Uh, and he specifically mentioned about how campuses need to be preserved and grown in terms of important people and important teams. So over to Dr. Ananda M.A., uh, Assistant Professor, Transdisciplinary University, Bangalore. Namaste. Welcome to Anandal. Yananda mayam devam nirmalas phatika kritim adharam sarva vidyanam Hayagrivam Upasmahe Gurur Brahma Gurur Vishnu Gurur Devu Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha so, Namaste to everybody. So, I'm uh, first of all, I thank all the IKS people and all the people who has given me a uh, golden opportunity to share my thoughts and views uh, here in this August audience. So my subject is on conceptualization of traditional archery, that is Dhanurvidya in modern context. So this goes like this. So martial arts. No, no, no. Next slide, then please. So, martial arts of the Indian subcontinent are diverse in nature and have origins of different times from various different regions that everybody know that. And some of the older traditions include the organized martial systems practiced by the Kshatriyas. The theories be behind Yoga, Ayurveda and Tantra such as Kundalini, Prana and Nadi that is a uh, nadi things and uh, chakra and marma are also present in indian martial arts early martial traditions find mention in indian literature including vedic literature dating back to the vedic period such as rigveda yajurveda atharvaveda and epics literature such as mahabharata and ramayana So, according to Vishnu Purana, no, 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 back. According to Vishnu Purana, text describes according to Vishnu Purana, text describes sir, don't play it. Don't play it. He's going off. Yeah. Can I say next? According to Vishnu Purana, text describes Dhanurveda as one of the traditional 18 branches of knowledge they, that is called Ashtadasha Vidyasthanas. That is Angani, Vedash, Chatwaraha, Mimamsa, Nyaya, Vistaraha, Puranam, Dharma, Shastramcha, Vidya, Shetash, Chaturdasha, Ayurvedo, Dhanurvedaha, Gandharva, Shetite, Trayaha, Artha, Shastram, Chaturthancha, Vidya, Shastadasha, Smritaha. So the tree structure of the 18 Vidyasthanas have been given in the next slide. Simply that is enough. So this is the tree structure which we can understand better. So next, here Dhanurveda is Upaveda of Yajurveda. Actually what happens, if you go to the internet and the other things, there are a lot of discussions telling that uh, Dhanurveda is Upaveda of Rigveda, Yajurveda, Atharvaveda, so many things. But there are a lot of evidences from 
various even in the vedas in the other uh, texts like shukraniti etc all of them tell that dhanurveda is upaveda of yajurveda actually some so many times yajurveda is considered as a kshatriya veda because of its way of pronunciation and so many other things so that is why dhanurveda is upaveda of yajurveda next sir. so dhanurveda has been mentioned in the following scriptures like agni purana akash bhairava tantra anu aushanasa dhanurveda ramayana mahabharata manasolasa shiva dhanurveda and shukraniti etc next so when we talk about dhanurveda and dhanurvidya dhanurveda is a ocean so dhanurveda is the upaveda of yajurveda as per the vasishthas dhanurveda samhita it tells about seven types of war dhanuhu chakram cha kuntam cha khadgan cha kshurika gada saptamam bahu yuddham syat evam yuddhani saptadha that means there are seven types of wars namely archery discus spear sword knife mace and wrestling here is an attempt to come conceptualize the aspects of ancient indian traditional archery and try to bring them into modern context the next so when we think about dhanurvidya as per the text of vasishthas dhanurveda samhita targets general targets are of four types lakshyam chaturvidham gneyam sthiram chaiva chalam tatha chala chalam dvaya chalam vedhaniyam kramenatu so there are four types of targets namely sthiram is static here static means the shooter and the target both of them are static chalam means moving target Sta shooter will be static chala chalam that means shooter will be moving and the target will be static and dvaya chalam both of them are moving so that you can see in the picture so static moving starting moving and both of them are moving so next and according to dhanurveda text aiming that is drawing the bow how sthandhanam trividham proktam adah urdham samam tada yojaye triprakaram hi karyeshu api yathakramam adhascha durapatitve same lakshyeshu nischale dridhasphotam prakurvita urdva sandhana yogatah so samasandhana is this one urdva sandhana means this way and adhas sandhana is downwards so this way three types of aiming is there that is drawing the bow so aiming should be downwards when the target is far away so for static target aiming should be normal with the eyesight level and for very firm or hard target you have to use the upwards that is urdhva sandhanam the next so holding of the bow string is known as guna mushti so it is of pataka vajra mushtischa simha karanah tathai vacha matsari kakatundi cha yojaniya yathakramam so there are five types of mushtis even it has been explained in detail i am not going to the details but one particular point i want to point out here tarjani madhyama madhye tarjani is point finger madhyama is ring finger uh, middle finger yatra punkhah prapidyate the end point of the arrow which has been folded up between these two fingers and anamika samayogat mushtih syad ekalavyakah today whatever the modern archery in modern archery whatever we are using that is ekalavya because there is no usage of thumb please remember that all of you know ekalavya has given his thumb as a guru dakshina to dronacharya so without using the thumb how you have to shoot the arrow that has been told here in the text so today's modern archery is nothing but parcel and parcel of ancient archery so we have to do a lot of literary research next sir so here that is what sir next one here interdisciplinary aspects which we have to think upon dhanurved dhanurvidya or even dhanurveda is interdisciplinary for example 
ధనుర్వేద అండ్ ఆయుర్వేద దర్ ఈస్ ఎ థింగ్ కాల్డ్ పాయనం ఫలపాయనం మీన్స్ క్వెంచింగ్ దట్ మీన్స్ మియరింగ్ ది హర్బ్స్ ఆర్ పాయిజనస్ థింగ్స్ టు ద యారో సో దట్ యూ కెన్ మేక్ ఇట్ వెరీ డెడ్లీ డెడ్లీ వెపన్ దట్స్ ఎ కాన్సెప్ట్ సో పిప్పలి సైంధవం కుష్టం గోమూత్రే తు సుపేషే అనేన లిప్య లేపయే క్షస్త్రం లిప్తం చాగ్నౌ ప్రతాపయే చిఖీ గ్రీవాను వర్ణాభం తప్త పీతం తథౌషధం తతస్తు విమలం తోయం పాయే క్షస్త్రం ఉత్తమం దట్ మీన్స్ పిప్పలి సైంధవ సాల్ట్ అండ్ కుష్ట త్రీ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ షుడ్ బి ఫౌండెడ్ ఆర్ గ్రైండెడ్ ఇన్ హౌ యూరిన్ అండ్ ఇట్ షుడ్ బి స్పియర్డ్ ఆన్ ది టీప్ ఆఫ్ ది యారో అండ్ ఇట్ షుడ్ బి హీటెడ్ అప్ అంటిల్ ఇట్ టర్న్స్ టు ద బ్లూ కలర్ లైక్ peacock's neck and it should be uh, cooled down so that will become a deadly weapon that's one concept uh, similarly they have told several type of there is another example is if you have got chuchundari type of one uh, herb so the lion or uh, animals won't come near to you that is another one next slide so dhanurvidya and yoga so today many people are uh, talking about pranayama and meditation etc so while uh, i was uh, reading about these things i was thinking before anyway today my in modern archery uh, people students you will get used to the uh, warm up sessions like exercises if we practice if the students or the trainers or whoever the learners practice pranayama meditation before doing the archery and if they do uh, what do you say experiments after practicing pranayama and meditation for over a period of 2 2 months 3 months and test how their mental ability is mental ability uh, what do you say ekagrata atma vishwasa everything then we could understand this so one example is this one ali dhe tu prakartavyam savyam chaiva anukunchitam dakshinantu purasta adva dura pate vishishyate when the target is far away so the left leg should be down and the right leg should be front and you have to shoot this way so this thing uh, looks like in similar it is very similar to virabhadrasana so we have to plan the particular asanas which suit for dhanurvidya all those things we have to plan next so dhanurvidya and modern science which we have to understand so actually the different types of arrows have been told in dhanurvidya that is called aramukha akshurapra gopucha vatsadanta depending upon different types of targets but today uh, to make the people understand it better so we have created one 3d image of those arrows and it has been done simulation in the with analysis that is uh, what should i say explicit dynamic analysis using ansys type of software so so analysis has been done with one particular arrowhead of ancient type with the modern type and the impact damage value etc of both of the arrowheads have been compared and recorded such experiments are necessary for understanding the concept better sir the file open the file click that go to page number 15 page number 15 down down slowly down see these are the 3d images of the uh, arrows mentioned in dhanurvedya aramukha churapra vatsadanta ardha chandra suchi mukha bhalla down next page so this is the arrowhead called gopucha which is used for general practice according to the text and this is the arrowhead which is used in today's normal archery that is also used for general practice so next so these are the impacts which have been done using the 3d modeling and simulation simulation that is explicit dynamic analysis so impact of gopucha impact uh, go impact damage value etc are higher of gopucha compared to the normal arrow so we have to what when it as it comes for the sports we have to do a lot of experiments and discussions how to reduce that gopucha thing to our uh, today's modern arrow so that it could be used in the sports we can how we can introduce those they are all called as broadheads 
and they are prohibited in the sports. So we have to make policy decision and so many other things. How to bring them into regular sports? The next. Sir. So these are the impacts. So go to the slide. Close. Go to the slide. Yeah, next one. So there are some suggestions here. That is, uh, suggestions and requisitions. Comparative study of ancient archery with modern archery, especially literary research and practical application. So whenever we think about archery, my first and foremost question is, do we have particular text which deals with all these things? And how much literary research work has been done into these particular things? Because without the theoretical knowledge, practical application is difficult. That is just like becoming like without the reading the lesson, if we are going directly to the question and answers, will it possible? That's the thing. So bring back the Guru Shishya Parampara. Like, that, is what, uh, that is what I am seeing that uh, Gurukal uh, in uh, Agastya Gurukulam, Agastya Kalari Paitu, whatever I am seeing now. So how to bring back all type of things in all type of uh, Kalari martial arts, Indian martial arts. So, planning of archery tournaments according to the ancient concepts. So, this is what we have to plan, where we have to sit together like people like uh, IKS people and uh, Sports Authority of India. So many people have to sit together and plan what are the pros and cons, how we can bring them forward to school levels. Even uh, people are discussing the same thing, so I am also stressing upon the same thing. And making policy decisions to bring traditional archery up to the level of Olympics. Today, traditional archery is there, but we have to think how we can plan to that level. That is my uh, humble request to, to everybody. And creating opportunities for coming generation, future generation. And bringing different types of traditional archeries together, like um, Bhutan archery is there, Kyrgyzstan archery is there, um, uh, Korean archery is there, Chinese archery is there, and um, our nomadic archery is there, or even a tribal archery is there. So how we can bring all the archery aspect together at one place. So here, about Indian martial arts. So I have told one drop of the ocean, that is uh, Indian uh, archery. Now I am telling about the ocean, that is Indian martial arts. So creation of Bharatiya Shaurya Kala Parampara Samsthana, that type of concept, is it possible to make? And same thing, whatever I have told about the archery, is it possible to do literary research about Gada Yuddha, Khadaga, whatever the um, things, weapons we have, how can we bring that to the sports level? And one more thing is, if somebody's expert has become expert, they could be even used for defense and uh, special tactics and all other forces. So, Adding this concept into the education system as co-curricular activity and encouraging such arts for the future, like uh, uh, creating, uh, what do you say, some endowments for that, making them uh, reciting the shlokas uh, from the grantha so that they will be aware of the knowledge and making them to prepare different type of items, martial art items, to prepare from themselves, their own hands, like creating 3D image, or making them and uh, doing analysis, all type of things. So conducting more and more tournaments at all level, even like as I told for archery, we have to plan it for all the Indian martial arts, like uh, school level, uh, zone level, um, etc. till international level. And making policies to take these aspects of arts to international levels. So this is the bi bibliography. We have got some sort of uh, text which, uh, through which I have taken the information. Okay, this is for your information, but we need more and more text to do more research. So, some useful links. Here, one thing I want to tell. So, there is a link uh, uh, prepared by Lars Anderson. He has used exactly what it has been told in our text. So, please open the first link. So we have to skip the video. Skip that. This video will look at the ancient classic called the Mara Bharatha.
This classic actually tells us about super archers or mythical archers, describes the types of skills that they used. First of all, shooting multiple arrows at multiple targets. Another thing is to hit the eye of a rotating fish by looking at it through a reflection. Also in this Indian legend, it talks about hitting a machete out of the air. Lars has to be careful here because if he doesn't hit it in the right place, it will spin out of control. When Lars Anderson saw Legolas, he thought Legolas was the ultimate archer. However, after he read the ancient Indian epic, he found his super archer hero. In the Marabahatha classic, it often talks about hitting enemy arrows out of the air. Now, Lars has trained for many years to perform this, so please don't try it at home. The skills in this ancient Indian classic are indeed mythical. Lars has actually performed these skills and he's brought mythical archery into reality. We hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, like and subscribe for more of these videos and share it around with your friends. So, shall I show one more video? Time is there. But you can open second one. Second, this one, two. So, I will show one third one also, yeah. So these are all different types of uh, positions, post, postures. He is uh, Mr. Jasminder Singh. He is in Mohali. By profession, he is a lawyer. By passion, he is an archer. He has got his own Facebook called Singh Archery. So he has got a uh, full, you know, one whole, uh, what do you say, in his room, he has got full of uh, all types of uh, bows. He describes what kind of uh, karigari has been done to the different types of bows. Tatar bow, Indian bow, Korean bow, all the things. Wait a second. No, no, no. That one. This one? Yeah, this one. Sorry. You can stop and turn. Third one. Ah. Internet problem? नमस्कार दोस्तों सत श्री अकाल मेरा नाम है जसमिंदर और सिंह आर्चरी के इस वीडियो में मैं आपका हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूं दोस्तों सिंह आर्चरी भारतीय धनुर्विद्या के प्रचार और प्रसार के लिए वचनबद्ध है इसको पुनर्जीवित करने के लिए हम प्रतिबद्ध हैं दोस्तों इसे हम आगे बढ़ाते हुए हम एक नई वीडियो सीरीज शुरू करने जा रहे हैं जिसका नाम है धनुर्विद्या और धनुर्वेद ये जो वीडियो सीरीज हम शुरू कर रहे हैं इसके जरिए हम धनुर्वेद और भारतीय धनुर्विद्या के बारे में आपको जानकारी देंगे इसकी विशेषताओं के बारे में आपको बताएंगे जो हमने अथक प्रयास और अध्ययन और शोध द्वारा हमने इकट्ठी की है और इसके प्रसार के लिए हम आपके लिए ये वीडियो सीरीज लेकर आए हैं दोस्तों जितनी पुरानी हमारी भारतीय संस्कृति है उतनी ही प्राचीन हमारी धनुर्विद्या भी है और ये आज से नहीं बल्कि तीन साल ईसा पूर्व से हमारे साथ है और हमारी संस्कृति का भिन्न अंग है हमारा खजाना है दोस्तों वैदिक काल में हमारे चार वेद जो कि बड़े शोध के बाद बनाए गए हैं और समय समय पर इसमें और संहिता द्वारा संकलन भी किया गया है दोस्तों हमारी संस्कृति में चार प्रकार के वेद हैं इसमें ऋग्वेद यजुर्वेद सामवेद और अथर्ववेद है शामिल है और हर वेद के उपवेद भी हैं उपवेद में समय समय पर ज्ञानियों द्वारा संकलन किया गया है और इसको अपडेट और अपग्रेड करते रहे दोस्तों ऋग्वेद का उपवेद है आयुर्वेद जिसमें औषधि और वनस्पति के बारे में जानकारी मिलती है और यजुर्वेद का उपवेद है धनुर्वेद जिसमें युद्ध विज्ञान कला के बारे में जानकारी मिलती है सामवेद का उपवेद है गंधर्व वेद जिसमें नाट्यशास्त्र और नित्य कला के बारे में जानकारी मिलती है और इसके अलावा अर्थर्वेद का उपवेद है अर्थवेद इसमें शिल्प कला और भवन निर्माण कला के बारे में जानकारी मिलती है तो दोस्तों हमारा जो विषय है वो धनुर्वेद के ऊपर आधारित है और हम आपको अपने इस वीडियो में धनुर्वेद के बारे में और भारतीय धनुर्विद्या के बारे में जानकारी और इसकी विशेषताएं बताते रहेंगे दोस्तों धनुर्वेद में 
सात तरह की युद्ध कला का वर्णन हमें मिलता है जिसमें धनुष कुंत शुरिका गदा खडग और बाहु शामिल है दोस्तों चूंकि हमारा जो विषय है वो धनु विद्या के ऊपर आधारित है इसलिए हम बाकी बातों के बारे में तो नहीं लेकिन मैं आपको धनुर्विद्या के बारे में जो धनुर्वेद कहता है वह जानकारी जरूर आपको दूंगा दोस्तों धनुर्वेद में पांच प्रकार की गुणमुष्ठि का वर्णन मिलता है इसके अलावा भी अन्य प्रकार की गुणमुष्ठियों का वर्णन है लेकिन पांच प्रधान है जिसमें दोस्तों ये जो पांच गुणमुष्ठी है ये है पताका वज्रमुष्ठि मत्सरी सहकरण मुष्टि और काकतुंडी ये शामिल हैं इसके अलावा जो मुष्टि जो सुनने में आती हैं देखने में मिली हैं वो है त्र्यंबक एकलव्य और अलग प्रकार की मुष्ठियों का भी प्रयोग किया जाता है जिसके बारे में मैं आपको आने वाली वीडियो में जानकारी देता रहूंगा तो दोस्तों मैं आज आपको बताता हूँ जो पहली गुण मुष्टि है जिसका नाम है पताका पताका का मतलब संस्कृत में पताका का मतलब होता है फ्लैग या झंडा ये मुष्टि इस तरीके से बनती है मुष्टि यानी के मुट्ठी ये इस तरीके से बनती है आप देख सकते हैं जैसे झंडा होता है वैसे ही ये इस तरीके से इसको बनाया जाता है तीन उंगलियां अंदर एक उंगली बाहर और अंगूठा ऊपर इसे कहते हैं पताका मुष्टि और इसके चलाने का तरीका वैसे धनुर्वेद में हर मुष्ठि का प्रयोग विशेष तौर से बताया गया है विशेष प्रकार के बाण चलाने के लिए बताया गया है और जो पताका मुष्टि है वो वैसे बेसिक ड्रॉ है आप उसको नॉर्मल जो बाण है उसे चलाने के लिए भी प्रयोग में ला सकते हैं लेकिन ज्यादातर ये नालिका यंत्र चलाने के काम आते हैं यानी कि जो जिसे हम माजरा कहते हैं छोटे बाण चलाने के लिए इसका प्रयोग किया जाता है ये बाहर की तरफ बाण के ऊपर लगा रहता है और अंगूठे को आप इसे पकड़कर खींच सकते हैं और इसको इस तरीके से छोड़ा जाता है इसे कहते हैं पताका मुष्ठी तो थैंक यू फॉर एवरीबॉडी फॉर लिसनिंग पेशेंटली थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट एनलाइटनिंग एंड एजुकेशनल लेक्चर एंड शेयरिंग द लिंक्स फ्रॉम व्हिच वी कैन लर्न मोर दिस मेला अनएक्सपेक्टेडली वी हैव लॉट ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस टू आर्चरी बिकॉज़ व्हेन वी प्लानड इट वी वर गेटिंग मास्टर आर्ट्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट स्टेट्स ऑफ इंडिया but then we had the vinard ancient archer come in he had the full bow arrow set up there live demonstration uh, your lecture was only told to me as dhanurveda it did not specifically get into archery so now i'm beginning to think if there is a divine signal here about uh, <laughs> something to do with archery thank you so much for being